So today, what I what I wanted to talk about here just um, was um, the biology of natural farming and um, and kind of explain a little bit of how I'm using the microscope to verify and validate different things that we observe. Like you see the plant grow really well. <coughs> I'm trying to use the microscope to make a, that correlation where you can visually see it and test and see you know, what, what biology is making plants grow better. So, um, so what you need to do this kind of analysis in soil is a microscope. Um, this one here is 400 times, so it can zoom in at least 400 times. It also has this light down at the bottom here. It's this, um, you know, this is a halogen or like LED light down there that's really bright. Uh, it goes through a condenser and then, then it comes up and those are the components that you need enough um, high power light to see the organisms because they're very small. We're looking at um, one micrometer in width, which is very, very tiny. It's a thousandth of a meter. Maybe one hundred. Ten thousandths? No. Yeah. 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 It's pretty small. It's really tiny, like whatever our micro is. Um, these, these microscopes here, it runs about um, $300 to $400. Um, the other microscope I have, like I just, I just got these microscopes here um, for the school, and this was about uh, $300, and then the camera was another $50 onto it. So, um, what, when you're looking for a microscope, another nice thing to have too is that um, if you see here when I'm twisting this, the slide moves, like the slide is moving around. And so it's real easy to then track and find the organisms. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Did you say where you got them at? Uh, microscope.net is where I went online. Oh, okay. um, and I also have those microscopes at the school garden too. So if you're wanting to use them, maybe make an exchange to do that. Um, so after I have my microscope, the next thing I wanted to go over is preparing a slide. Maybe she might have that connection as well. Oh, what you looking for? Well, the thing is it's going from this and I have Get the connection with the thing. Yeah. slides is in this bag here um, and um, I use this medicine dropper um, you can I got this at Long's it's just the um, thing that measures in milliliters here and the milliliters are important to me because what I want to do is to dilute my slide typically 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 and so um, So, so what I'm going to do here is to prepare prepare my slide, and I want to be somewhat scientific with this and, and be consistent across my thing. Because if I prepare slides differently, I'll get kind of different results. But this is a pretty consistent way to prepare slides that I'm going to share with you. And I have three different samples here. One is from an IMO pile, this one. Um, this one is from my garden outside, and this one is from another part of my garden. 
where they're all looking really healthy. So I try to pick some healthy soil samples. And notice how this one made the bag already kind of um, like wet. It's so I know that whatever's in here is alive because it's breathing. So I'm just gonna open this bag and use this as my soil sample here to prepare this slide. So I want to do it one to five. So what I do is I fill up my measure to four milliliters of water. And so it's at four milliliters of water and then I add in dirt until it goes up to five. And then I know I got enough one to five in there. Isn't that one to four? Uh, not the way I understand it. It caught it a little different. I guess so. I thought four parts of one and mm -hmm. one part of another be four to one, one to four. Mm -hmm. I, this is the way I'm consistent across okay, yeah. the Yeah, that's, that's the important part, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you can say it's one part in five. One, one part in five, five. yeah. I guess mine could be slightly stronger, but I don't know. As long as you do it consistent, it doesn't matter. One, yeah. So, yeah, and, and also you change your dilution based on how your sample ends up looking. You know, like, like if, I, if I'm looking through and I can't see anything, it's too muddy, then I can dilute more if I see. I'm trying to count certain things. But one to five I find is good. So you see now it's up to five. I got my thing. So then um, the next part is to shake it because all the biology is on this stuff. And so just co as consistently as possible for about 30 seconds of just, I'm not trying to like super tear it off. I'm just trying to be pretty even with this. And then once I'm, Satisfied with that, I take just a drop. Drop that onto my slide. And you can do either one or two drops, depending, just how be consistent with it. And then take my cover slip and I put that on the top. And then I kind of um, see how it's like all a cluster in the center. I kind of like rub it around a little bit just to spread the water out a little bit. Try as best as possible. To make it big. So you can see kind of, I got like you know, almost over half the slide here. Probably be better as a clump of dirt in it though that's keeping it from totally going on there. Um, spread that out. Actually, I probably should spread it out better. Um, so that, that's how you can make a slide. Um, I'll have some slides over here. So after we're done with this, you can make slides and use the microscope to check it out. But um, one to five, shake it 30 seconds, take a drop. Um, so. This, um, this next slide here says biology in a 600 to 600 soil sample, which what that means is the biology where I have 600 micrograms of bacteria and 600 micrograms of fungus in a sample per gram, I guess. And that's the ideal conditions that we want for most of the crops we're growing. So if we're growing taro or sweet potatoes or cassava or you know things that are um, you know crops like trees, coffee trees, um, those types of things, those are the that's the range we want to be in. And so what I have written here is what you should see on a slide if I'm in that 600 to 600. If I'm balanced with my things, what I'll see. And on here, I have one nematode per slide. So what I do is I put the microscope to 100 times power, and then I just um, scroll across the slide. Um, 
nematodes, you're, you're looking, um, once you find the nematode, you can identify what it is. But for every slide, I should have one nematode. I should have about 100 flagellates on there, which are bigger life forms that have a flagellum on them, and they just kind of bumble around in the soil, and they help to cycle nitrogen and cycle nutrients throughout the system. Um, you shouldn't see a lot of ciliates, which are attracted when oxygen gets cut off. Uh, and every view on here, I should see a beneficial fungus. So I, for every slide, I should see one nematode, but for every place I move the microscope and move that slide around, I should see one fungus. So there's a lot of different funguses I should see on this slide for it to be in my, um, in the balance thing. And I should also see some active bacteria. A lot of times I look at the thing and it's just all um, dead and nothing's moving around. But in a healthy soil, I should see some things wiggling around and moving and interacting. So those are the main things I have here. Um, So what I'm going to do right now is just go a little, show you some pictures of the guys that we're looking at, and then we'll put this live through here to look at what we have. So um, in the IMO and in soil samples, we're looking at about eight different cre creatures and life forms in there. Um, the first thing you'll see is a lot of bacteria. And they just kind of look like chunks of dirt. They're kind of glued together. They may be round, they may be stick shaped, but they're really, really tiny and they're, and they're all clumped together. And you'll always find bacteria. Everywhere you go, you'll find bacteria. Then the next level up from that is an actinobacteria, which this is where this form started to turn a little bit more elongated and into tubes. And this is um, on the edge of going from, like if you see a lot of this in your uh, sample, it's um, starting to go anaerobic, it's starting to run out of oxygen. Um, this is also responsible for the smell when it rains. The smell that comes up is actinobacteria. There's tons of them everywhere. How does your soil run out of oxygen? Uh, compaction. Um, so, so these are the guys that restore oxygen back to the soil. And this is why this is what I'm most focused on is beneficial fungus. And when I'm looking through the microscope, that's what I'm trying to see to determine the health of my soil, determine if my inputs are working. Um, so, beneficial fungus are um, parallel tubes in the soil, and they're darker brown in color. They tend to be, um, like parasitic fungus are clear, whereas beneficial fungus are darker colored. Um, and they're also wider than three and a half micrometers, so they tend to be wide in the soil. They may break into chunks, but they'll always be really nice and wide. Um, and so, do you see this fungus here, this picture, that long tube? Mm -hmm. That is the chunk of fungus. And during the process of shaking it up, you break them all into pieces. And so that's just inevitable that you'll find them kind of broken up in there. <laughs> um, and then the other really exciting thing that you'll see, and this is an, another good measure of soil health that um, Kun Hu Wei, I think that's how you say it. She studies this, these nematodes specifically. 
because these you can see at 100 times power. And they tell you a lot about the soil, but they're little miniature snakes. And so they'll be like swimming around these snakes. And a lot of times people associate nematodes with bad guys, but only, only typically root feeders are, are bad for farmers. And these guys are everywhere. So having good, healthy nematode populations keep your root feeders in check. So uh, a, few, a few other things you may see in the soil samples are things that are budded in a row like this. And these are um, yeasts, which a yeast buds, and they're um, anaerobic fungus. So they're, they're living without oxygen that are fungus. That's what makes beers and uh, wines is yeast. So that's not a good thing to see. It depends. Not not in large quantities. Um, <coughs> if you're if you're making like a compost tea and you see a lot of yeast, you know you've lost oxygen, and you're probably not growing what you want. Um, this is spirilla, or spirilla, or forget the exact name, but thing because it's this spring looking thing and what this this is a pathogen it's associated with disease like if you eat a whole lot of this you'll get food poisoning um, and that's why it's always good to have the microscope to check what you're working with because this is present in an IMO sample that I checked out and had this spirilla in there so you know, you're putting out good microbes, but you may also put out these guys. So verifying, looking quickly under the microscope, you can see that, you know, there or not. Um, and then, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's kind of like Godzilla looking things, huge on there. Um, and what this is, is what they call an arthropod, which is kind of like a beetle or like a um, mite or like a, thing that crawls around in the soil. And so there, it looks huge when you're zoomed in so much. Um, sometimes you'll find their legs and stuff broken off, their antennas, lots in the soil. Well, especially compost piles. Um, and then this is just uh, what IMO4 looks like. That When you put IMO4, the sugar and the osmotic pressure makes the things form um, Globs and spores, and um, there's not much active stuff happening in the actual input. So if you just take the inputs and look at them, they're not that exciting. They kind of look like this. But once you dilute them and you get them wet and you make the sugar not so powerful, then this will sprout into life. So it looks. Um, but every once in a while, you will find some fungus living in IMO itself. This is the basic theory of why you would use the microscope right here. Is that if you take a soil sample and you look and you only find bacteria, that really only harbors weeds. So the plants that live bacterial oriented have weeds. When you start the soil sample and you start to change your fungus and bacteria ratio, the plants that start to grow, fungus really likes trees and slow growing, woody, lignin things. So it's on this extreme. Whereas bacteria is really fast growing, quick turnover. Um, and so it tends to favor weeds, which just flower really fast, die, keep cycle those nutrients really fast. Whereas a tree is really um, methodical and slower. So as you start to shift your ratios out to become much more fungal, then naturally weeds won't want to sprout. I'm looking forward to that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, 
and so so yeah, that and and using the microscope to be able to tell you um, when you do an application how effective it was. And um, so So what do you want in between? In between. In between fungus and bacteria. What's the mean one? Oh, that's yeah, equal parts mm -hmm. by weight. And that's where the vegetables grow best is when it, when the bacteria and the fungal match. Yeah, um, certain certain veggies like like lettuce, for instance, is not gonna be as hooked into a fungal. Like the fungus will unlock nutrients in the soil, but the fungus isn't going to actually plug into the lettuce. Whereas a tree is actually going to plug into the fungus. Okay. As well as the fungus out there dissolving rock into nutrients. So, so certain plants really associate really heavily with the fungus and other plants. Um, Do the bacteria dissolve rock too? Probably, but fungus is like that's what it does. That's its main purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have right now? So what is that? Yeast. Fuck yeast. It. <laughs> it's a yeast, right? You see how it's it's, it's budding. Budding. They're budding on each other. These two. Those are yeast right there, and then that might be. So and then this right here, this is a really nice. Um, example of a nice um, beneficial fungus. See this dark color, this uniform shape here, all the way through. Okay. You see the fungus is a little black thing moving around. Yeah. Yeah. You know what that is? Uh, so that's that. You know, this is actually kind of perfect. You see how that? That's one bacteria. So do you see the size of that black dot on there? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna assume that that's one micrometer in length because. Bacteria are typically about that size, one micrometer in length. And so you see how it's dancing around out there. You could take maybe three or four of those and put them side by side across here, like one, two, three, four. And that would be the width of this fungus, right? So you can see how four of those would fit across. Mm -hmm. So that gives me a scale to know that this fungus is at least greater than three and a half micrometers. So I would say that this is definitely a beneficial fungus. So you use this tiny, like one bacteria to get your scale to see, and then you measure like, okay, so that one's it's wide enough, right? If it was only half that size, I would say, oh, that's not a beneficial one. Oh. Because I can see that all the way across. So, and then sometimes here, 
can you see what I'm doing? I'm I'm scrolling in and out. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm zooming in and out. And you when you find a fungus, you want to kind of zoom across it to make sure that it is parallel the whole way, that edges are parallel the whole way, because then you know it's actually a fungus and it's not just like a, a antenna or like a leg or something else. <laughs> they tend to be more round. So what I what I try to do is just scroll to some random spot and then look to see what I'm working with here. And so um, you, you guys can't see it. I have a little bit wider field, field of vision here. Um, but this guy was in my field of vision. So I scrolled to some random spot on my slide. I just went to like a random view is what this is called. And in this view, I found another fungus. So in my view, found a fungus. So I know that I'm getting closer to that equal ratio. Because everywhere I go, I should find at least one. This thing's moving. So I'll try to just go to some other spot. Mm -hmm. This was your soil sample, not a, not your IMO. Yeah, no, this is a soil sample. It's it's from an area that I just put IMO actually about uh, about a month ago. So it's good to see how to. Okay, so can you see that thing up at the top? What is that? Leg. <laughs> No, this, <laughs> this thing that's twisted right here? No, it's twisted. By Jade. I can't see it. So you can see how I zoom through it and you can see how it twists. Mm -hmm. So you see that it's not a fungus because it's twisting like that. <coughs> so I know it's not. And so what that is most likely is some sort of um, plant material, some sort of like <laughs> fiber, some sort of uh, other so I think that's another chunk of fungus there. Maybe, maybe not. Sometimes it's hard to tell, but I believe that is and so here um, okay yeah so here um, so this guy here this is a, a fungus growing throughout my sample but is this one beneficial? Which one? This is there right there. But I would say because this guy is much thinner, mm -hmm. and he's only about two micrometers across, I would say that this chunk is most likely not actually a beneficial fungus. Even though he is of the dark color, the size being the making more of a difference and then the color being the secondary part of that. If it's not beneficial, is it necessarily uh, detrimental? No, it, it might just be like benign, like just just hanging out. Okay. Um, then there is this here, which this is either um, Either an algae or a piece of um, piece of pollen. Both both algaes and, and like little uh, diatom type of things look look really uh, fractally, and so do pieces of pollen that you'll see. So chunks, of <coughs> things like that in there are pollen or 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 an algae, depending. Um, these big clumps out here. These are what you would call, when you're looking at this sample, you would call that this is an aggregate. When something is stuck and clumped together like this, like this is an aggregate. So this is just a bunch of bacteria glued together on some particles of dirt or and some other 
um, minerals and things in the soil that are glued together. Um, and uh, if you need to count bacteria for, for some reason, which I don't do that, but you would have to just dilute this more and then see, um, to, to break these aggregates up to see, because this is probably like, I don't know, thousands of them. I can't make a good estimate on that. And that's one of the reasons in, when I'm doing my soil analysis, I largely ignore the bacteria. Because if I have good fungus, the good fungus will keep the bacteria in order, and the bacteria that arrives tends to be beneficial as well. If I have beneficial fungus, I guarantee I have beneficial bacteria. So just looking for the fungus, which are easy to see, easy to identify, I don't have to worry about DNA sampling these guys to find out who they are. I know if this guy is here and he's beneficial, that they're good guys and they're on his team. They're hanging out together. Yes. What's the mechanism by which they regulate the bacteria? Uh, different, um, di different things that they'll secrete, different uh, hormones and enzymes that they secrete. Uh, even like the plant itself will emit different sugars to change the bacteria and the fungus in the soil. And then the fungus <coughs> itself can put out certain antibiotics or probiotics to also change that relationship. Um, so on here you might see all these tiny little things and think there's a lot of life and I have a lot of active bacteria, hmm. but really what you're seeing is just the water and the slide and just because the fans on the table it's making it vibrate, it's just <laughs> vibration of Brownian motion is what they call it. <coughs> and so these are not active and moving, even though they look like they're jiggling around. To see an active and moving one it wouldn't be just jiggling, it would actually be like an intent, like you'd see it move down and then like across and then, you know, like, it'd be on a pattern, not just jiggling, <clears throat> these are jiggling. So, yeah, I haven't seen any active stuff on here yet, or any um, larger life, but good, good fungus here, so far. And I'll go to one last random spot and then... <clears throat> so I'm like tracing this fungus or whatever it is, and it's if that is a fungus, it's definitely not a good one because it's so skinny and thin, and it's also up like that. So I'm tracing through to see it. But sometimes you have to change how you're focusing to see what's in every slide. Um, but yeah, check, check this out for in terms of like fungus on my slide. Like, um, so I got some good good stuff going here. And another another thing, um, you see how this guy has segments in him. This is different than the yeast that were stuck together. This is actually one fungus with these segments. And the segment puts them in a special family of fungus, but these tend to be um, also beneficial um, when they're segmented like that. Um, cool. So that was that sample. Um, I gotta clean up some equipment to like do the next uh, sample. Um, but <laughs> how do you want to do it? Do you want to all continue to look at these samples and go through the IMO? Sure. Yeah, yeah I like seeing them up I there like when you can explain way. it to us. Okay, so I'll put the IMO up here. Like, um, yeah, you rinse that out. Yeah. Anything else you can do? Yeah, uh, actually, I brought a bunch of things, but. Um, no, I'm good on that one. Slide and be clean, but I got another one. <laughs> 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 uh, I recommend.
recommend you try to get glass slides too, if you can, even though they're fragile and it's sometimes they get stuck in your fingers. Um, <laughs> plastic is not as easy to work with. Do you use the slides to have a little depression in them? Uh, no, no, I don't. I, I do have one. There's one, there's one like, this one right here has the dimple in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, um, but I'm trying to kind of get it flat and not have too much depth. Because um, I, yeah, like the organisms are kind of going to die. I'm going to smush them up. You done with that slide? Yeah. Uh, okay, Brett, please help me slip. It's not shattered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, Lord. Yeah, so there's no slide. Cool. And so I didn't mention, but I, I learned this stuff, this um, slide stuff from Elaine Ingham, who is famous for the. Um, soil food web is her company and um, and she taught this microscope course in 2012 in Kohala and we learned all about composting and all about this biology and I thought it was it was amazing because um, the natural farming stuff was like the optimal already like and she was going through composting to kind of get to this process, but natural farming was the optimal, and this gave me the tools to um, analyze the natural farming. Because before before that, I've been like you know you make up an IMO four pile or you make your IMOs and you know like is it good? Is it not? And so this tool right here and understanding the beneficial fungus gives you a real quick you know you don't you can save time, money, energy, all that just quickly, and especially when I'm doing um, compost teas and brewing things. I like to look at the organisms before I use them. Um, doing an experiment with my mom right now on um, flowers, and you know how the water's super stink after like a week of <laughs> flowers, and it smells just horrible? Oh, yeah. We found that if we put um, the lactic acid bacteria in there, there's no smell. After the two weeks you pull it out and we verified that with the microscope that the untreated batch, um, the un untreated batch just had all these snakes in it. These tiny little like <coughs> mosquito larva looking things. And that's what's thinking. Like your body is telling you do not those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and so this is the IMO. Um, the IMO is sometimes more exciting if you soak it in water a little bit first <coughs> and you, you kind of activate it because t sometimes it tends to be too dehydrated. But this pile is was outside already still going, so I just pulled it where it was had I think it had enough moisture in it is what I'm trying to say. Alright, <clears throat> is there a place on the web you can look for um, identification of soil bacteria and funguses? Uh, sort of, not, not really. Uh -oh. um, like, it, it's hard to find the right level of, um, you know, like some are super scientific and it's like, and it's hard to find ones that are like practical yeah. that I found that taught me, you know, like what I need to know. But I do think that um, I was talking to Vivian who took Elaine's course as well and she was talking about make, making like a, a s online database of where you know because I can take pictures with the same camera yeah and and then just like having a database of it this is what we found in this area because just in our little conversation I found out that she has never seen a flagellate and 
maybe she, she didn't know exactly what it was or whatever, but she had never found one in all of her samples, but she finds amoebas all the time. And I look at my samples, and I've seen a fair amount of flagellates, not a whole lot, but I've seen them, but I've never seen an amoeba. <laughs> So, and she lives up in Canada. She's in like, I, I don't know, the, where they, French Canada, like the other side. And, um, and so just like, that's just an amazing, like, you know, like if we're sampling our yard, like she's naturally rich in amigos and we're naturally not. Like, Interesting. So yeah, having that database of soil, I don't put two drops on you. <laughs> So um, first, first thing first on like when you get a new slide um, and you put it in is that you can scan through, which I can kind of reduce the like here for me to see anything. Can you still see it there? Mm -hmm. So first thing first is I scan the slide just to look for nematodes at 40 times because you can see them, they're big enough to, they're writhing around that it's worth a little bit of time to immediately, just before you start to really look into the slide, to just go across. And this is the edge of my slide. You guys see that? Uh -huh. That's the edge, so I can see from edge to edge, just kind of cruising across my slide. Let's see if I see any nematodes. What are these round circles? Oh, these, so. Air bubbles. Yeah, no, like, yeah, there's lots of stories about them, but they're air bubbles. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes they look it's fantastic. Cool. You're looking at it, you're like, whoa. <laughs> but it's just air. <laughs> uh, Time to close the chickens. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and so I, I did not see any nematodes. I scrolled the whole thing. I was hoping to find one, because so, it's always nice to see and share. That might be a beard hair. <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All my samples are there. <laughs> um, okay, so, so I scrolled through it 40 times and find any nematodes, so I'm just gonna zoom in to um, 400 times and um, 400 times is what I'm using to look for my beneficial fungus. Um, you expect to see nematodes in the IMO? Yeah, yeah, because it's such a rich environment that they're in there. It's like a small snake, and I was an interesting fact for Elaine is that um, they took the nematodes and put it in a jar with no food, and then left it for like a decade or longer, and came back and put it under the microscope, and they're still moving around. <laughs> that apparently they don't need to eat food to live. Wow. Or we don't know what they're eating. <laughs> Living on photons. Um, so this is this is the IMO sample, and not nearly as exciting as the soil sample, I don't think at least. But do you notice all these round things mm -hmm. that I'm seeing? All these round things in mm -hmm. here. What those are typically are fungal spores or spores of some sort, because this IMO is dry, and then they're in their hibernation form. So it's as if they're like in an egg, they're in their hardened off state. And that's why I said that if you moisten the IMO for a while and then you look at it, these will hatch and then it'll be much more exciting to see. But right now they're just kind of sleeping in here. A, a great way to wake them up is by adding um, worm tea, which has lots of humic acid in it. And it really wakes the fungus up and these guys up. <coughs> 
yeah, ton, tons of spores. You see it's just like kind of covered with spores. I did see some interesting things. So it's, it's hard to say, like, um, yeah. looking at your soil to judge when you're at the equal parts of fungus is easier versus looking at your IMO, mm -hmm. right? So, I'm glad I started with the exciting one. <laughs> um, any, any further questions? Is there a way to tell that your IMO is uh, got the right proportions of, of what you want it to have? Do you know that you got a good batch? Yeah, um, in your when you're like if you put out your collection, your your simple starch before you add the equal parts of sugar to preserve it, you can take that and same like I did, just shake that up and then see what you get. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. As soon as you add the sugar, they're gonna they're gonna not be active, and you're not gonna see them. Though. And what you want to see in, in a good IMO like that would be equal amounts of bacteria and fungi. Equal by weight. It's not equal by amounts. Weight. Yeah. The the okay. bacteria are gonna far outnumber the fungus always, but by weight. Okay. Which I'm just yeah yeah. So I'm just estimating the biomass too, you know, like based on you know if it's greater than three and a half micrometers and I see this many, then that gives me an estimate of the biomass. So that was one per every view. Mm -hmm. If you saw one fungus per every view, then you would have equal parts, you think? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, like you saw, I was cruising around, I saw predominantly beneficial fungus as well. And so that's another thing. If I'm seeing predominantly uh, not beneficial fungus, you know, then I know, uh, well, you should make actually actinobacteria to go in and they kind of clean the slate for you. When you say one fungus per view, what's your magnification? 400 times. 400. Yep. Yeah, I think those are all good questions that I kind of like, it's like a technicality. Are there kinds of fungus oil? <laughs> <laughs> Two. You're like, yeah, like, I mean, trillions. Like, 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 in a, in, like I mean, in this bag alone, there's like a trillion, right? And so, like, and, and one of, one of the best things about this method is that the diversity is is so. That's what we're trying to encourage. So when you're mixing your pile, even if you take the microbes from here and you mix it over there you're now creating this diversity. You know, it's like mixing the universe together. You get all these different things. So, I mean, thousands. The, they, scientifically, they don't even know, like they estimate, they know like, I don't know, 10, two to 10% of like all that exists. Um, certain ones you cannot grow. The reason I use this method here, certain ones you cannot grow plating. So you know like in microbiology you take the sample, you put it on a plate of stuff and it grows, right? Mm -hmm. When you put the lid on top and you cut off the oxygen, only stuff without oxygen is going to grow, which, and only stuff that grows on that is going to grow. So with this microscope you can see stuff that grows in the soil and stuff that grows with oxygen. And so it's a using this live method here versus trying to plate to see what's going to grow gives you much more of an idea of what's happening in the soil. Most, most of the microorganisms we know about are the ones that grow on the plate because those are easy to grow and those tend to actually be bad guys, guys that attack you. 
And so we know a lot about them, but we don't know a lot about the good guys that don't grow in the, you know, they, they grow in the soil <coughs> because they're so diverse and because they're so amazing, but we can, you know, we can look at them. Any other questions? Are you going to do your other sample or no? Uh, I, I can and I will. I'd rather, um, I guess, I brought some food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some snacks. And then, um, and then, yeah, we can check things out. How do you increase your fungus count in your soil? Uh, collecting, <laughs> collecting where you know there's good fungus already. So uh, then feeding it the natural farming inputs, which tends to really increase the biology, the, the beneficial biology.